I've just been reading about an experiment that uh, was carried out in some psychology departments in the States. I don't know when the date was these things were carried out, I'll have to find out. But uh, how it works is that the, the subjects of the experiment, which are undergraduate students, I think, typically in this experiment, uh, are given lists of words, and they're at the list of five words, and they're asked to construct four-letter sentences out of these five words. They're told it's a test to do with um, language construction or something like that. Uh, and they're timed how long it will take and so on. And there's probably a list of, of, a set of ten or so lists of these five words that they make four-letter sentences out of. Uh, and then when the test is complete, they're thanked and sent on their way. What the students don't know or aren't told is that in each of these five letter, five word combinations, there's one of those words will have something to do with age. Um, so a list of five words might contain the word grey, for example, or might contain the word wrinkled, or might contain the word. Um, well, I think in the example I, I, I was looking at, it contains words like Florida and Bingo, which I guess in the States are more associated with age than they are, than they are in the UK. Uh, so, that each, uh, so they're all given these lists. And I've looked at the list myself, and it's not evident from looking at those lists that each of those ones does contain a word that could associate with age. But uh, even though the students are told this is an experiment to do with language, it's actually an experiment to do with uh, a kind of covert or tacit or subliminal or subconscious processing of information. And what the experiment has found is that um, the students who've gone through these lists, uh, when they walk down the corridor away from the experimenter, walk much slower than they walk when they're on the way to the experiment. And it's been double-blind trials with different lists that don't contain those age terms. So the conclusion is from that is that on some level these students have internalized somehow these terms to do with age and that's being expressed in their physical behavior. They're walking as if they're older people somehow or as if they're feeling the weight of age on their shoulders even though they weren't consciously aware that that they were being prompted in that way. I think there's another one done similar uh, experiment done again with lists of words of, um, which contain you can like this uh, subliminal or hidden or uh, non-conscious list. And I think this second experiment, this variant, contained words which were to do with uh, good behaviour do with politeness and patience and etiquette. Uh, and students, uh, participants in that experiment who'd been through it, uh, demonstrated much greater levels of patience. I think the, the test for that is that people who conducted the test were sent off down a corridor and were invited to, or were required to report to someone who was in, who were in an office down the corridor. And uh, the person who was supposed to report to was in a sort of staged conversation that the subject would have to interrupt. And students who'd been, I beg your pardon, subjects who'd been kind of uh, primed to be uh, well behaved and polite took much, much, much longer to interrupt that conversation. In some cases, never interrupting it, but just standing patiently waiting. Uh, again, it's a kind of demonstration that. Uh, on some level, their behaviour and attitude has been affected by this non-conscious priming process. The reason why I'm mentioning that, or the reason why it's, um, it seems salient to the things I'm thinking about, is uh, in relation to the way we think about what that process is. Even talking about it, like I'm finding myself using words like subconscious or subliminal. Uh, indicating that I'm kind of conceptualizing this stuff, this information, as entering the 
mind of the participants, kind of at a low level. It's sneaking in under the radar, uh, under the level of consciousness, under the threshold of awareness, under the uh, under the limit, which I think is threshold of um, of, of uh, available conscious access. The one. Uh, variant on that, I suppose, in the terms that I've used so far thinking about it, is this word tacit, which is Polanyi's term again. Uh, tacit doesn't have this sense of beneathness about it. It has a sense of silence. Uh, and certainly in terms of my own interpretation, there's a kind of dark quality about it, but I don't really know why that is. Uh, so the information is going in silently, it's not announcing itself on the way in. Uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that it's underneath, that it's coming up from above. It's more how I'm sort of visualizing this, is that it's kind of coming in from the side, in the way that I've spoken about before, subsidiary awareness, subsidiary visual awareness, kind of comes in from the side and contributes to the focal awareness that we think of as, well, in that example, depth perception, or in Polanyi's um, example, depth perception. Uh, perhaps one of the distinctions that makes that reasonably valid is that in those experiments that I've described, once the subjects are, once it's pointed out to the subjects that have what's happening there, then the effect completely disappears. So it is possible to bring out those patterns of words to do with age or words to do with politeness. It is possible to bring those to focal attention and uh, in doing so dismiss the silent effects on your actions and your attitudes. Whereas I think with, if something was truly subconscious, then it would not be possible to do that. Actually, having said that, I'm probably talking rubbish there, because subsidiary awareness, in Solani's terms, isn't, um, can't seem to be deconstructed back into its component parts. So I'm going to have to think more about that. But there does seem to be a variation between the idea of the subliminal and subconscious, and uh, this other idea of the tacit, 